Brothers and sisters in VR. I have some personal rules when it comes to reviewing early access games, especially from indie companies. First, go into it with an open mind. Second, keep in mind that it is early access. And finally, don't kick the shit out of it. After screwing around in Phasmophobia, Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of PolterQuest. Tonight we'll be going into the house behind me in order to check out the phantom that is Helen Smith. According to legend, she was a small-time prostitute who took up residence in this roadhouse in order to pleasure many, many truck drivers. I thought I was now man enough to jump into a dark, demonic VR puzzle game. And I discovered that, little bitch that I am, I still feel this primal urge to flee when the monster gets close. And I hear the raspy... <laughs> this is about the point where I start waving my weapon like a scared little girl. It gives me a feeling in my balls that can best be described as... Nah man, this ain't for me. You are Dr. Dark. A John Constantine-esque character who deals in exorcisms. After getting hired by the feds to check out a creepy doll, you manage to open a door to the 11th dimension, and the adventure unfolds. The general atmosphere is dark, brooding, and to me, unsettling. In your travels, you will encounter zombies, skellies, and the like, and find some sick hardware with which to deal with them. On a side note, I have to respect a game and a developer that shows that much reverence for the classic sawed-off side-by-side my favorite video game weapon of all time. The positives, scary atmosphere, challenging yet doable puzzles. I never once had to look up a guide on how to finish these puzzles. Fun weapons, a decent story, and well-designed levels. And now for the negatives. As I said before, I refuse to talk shit about an indie dev's baby while it is early access. So instead, here are the things I found difficult and in general disliked. When I started, I found item management to be a brain teaser in and of itself. I have never had to use the thumbsticks to cycle through my inventory. I admit that after a while I got used to it, but the right thumbstick has been permanently mapped to snap turning on the controller in my mind. Instead, it cycles your weapons. Also, there is no snap turning. I understand that room scale means that the game expects me to walk around my play area to interact with the environment, but I live in fear of tripping or sending my controller through a wall. When enemies appear, there doesn't seem to be any directional sound, so your ears are met with the spooky sound and combat music, but you can't hear exactly where it is coming from. Teleporting can be taken advantage of in game-breaking ways. No spoilers, but I was definitely able to get to certain places and do things earlier than I was intended. I personally dislike the teleporting movement style that VR offers. I tend to quit these games pretty early if that is the movement scheme. But the dark method kept me engaged in spite of my dislike for it. In the end, this game is kind of a mixed bag. I enjoyed it, to say the least, but in order to recommend it, I need to preface this first. If you're an experienced, open-minded VR player, willing to make some concessions, and want a unique experience, then go for it. It's not a bad game at all. There's just a few things that could be done better, and I understand it's an early access, so maybe these things I have addressed will be fixed in the future. But if not, I still had fun playing it. For everyone else, they might want to wait for the full release in 2021. Thanks for watching, guys. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next one.